know I'm not a hockey expert. Rockford's GM, Mark Bernard, is on the bench. Why is Mark Bernard on the bench? As many of you know, I was an enforcer for the Rockford Ice Hockey. Stand firm, Rockford! You have a hockey champion! Hello and welcome into episode number 11 of Hog Talk. It's the official podcast for the Rockford Ice Hogs. Today, our guest is Josh Healy, a defenseman for Rockford who, for a couple of years, was terrorizing the Ice Hawks. He's a physical defenseman, and let's just say this year we're glad that he's on our side. We'll get to our interview with Heels here in just a little bit. If you're watching on YouTube, first of all, thank you for your patronage, but also you might notice that uh, the BMO Center looks a little bit different. Behind me, we're recording this as we have some tables set out for our season ticket holder banquet here tonight, uh, again, as we're recording this. So uh, by the time that you're watching this or listening to this, uh, if you're a season ticket holder, hopefully you had a chance to hang out with some of your favorite Ice Hawks, get some autographs, and pick up uh, some discounted merchandise as well. But it's been an uh, eventful couple of days for Rockford. The Ice Hawks picked up a pair of huge wins last weekend. First, they knocked off the Central Division leading Milwaukee Admirals in a thrilling 4-2 to final this last Saturday or last Friday uh, in Milwaukee at Panther Arena. Michael Tepley with the game winner set up by Lucas Reichel. And then on Saturday, the Ice Hogs traveled to Grand Rapids and took down the second place Griffins, who were riding a 17 game point streak, the longest active point streak at the time in the AHL. Uh, Grand Rapids on that heater heading into that game. And the Ice Hogs came back from a 3 0 deficit. They were down 3 1 coming into the third. And Rockford ripped off goals uh, from uh, Cole Gutman, Jackson Cates, uh, and then also Brett Seney as well. Three goals in the span of a minute and 28 seconds. The Hawks took the lead in that third period. Uh, Grand Rapids eventually tied it, but then Rockford won in overtime on an Ethan Del Mastro game winner. So a lot of excitement these last uh, these last couple of games for the Ice Hogs, who are now just a couple of points outside of uh, third place in the Central. Again, as we've been saying throughout the year, if you can grab that third spot in the Central, that will allow you to bypass that first round of the postseason. It's Texas who is directly in front of Rockford in the standings currently. And guess what? The Hogs have a couple of dates with the Stars coming up next week after they take on the Chicago Wolves at Allstate Arena on Saturday this weekend. So a lot of exciting things here happening in March. We also have some exciting home games uh, coming down the pipe as well. Our first responders night uh, sponsored by Jam Construction is coming up on Saturday here at the BMO Center in a couple Saturdays, uh, the 16th, I should say. And then we also have St. Patrick's Day on the 17th. That's a four o'clock puck drop on St. Patrick's Day Sunday. So you can watch your you know, CBS selection show for NCAA March Madness while you're checking out the Ice Hogs taking on the San Jose Barracuda. So a uh, Pacific Division opponent coming into the state line to take on the Ice Hogs on the 16th and the 17th. Uh, the Ice Hogs will be wearing those special St. Patrick's Day kits on both or for both of those games. It's an awesome template. If you have not seen it, go to Ice Hogs social media to see, uh, I believe it's Jalen Lipen modeling the jerseys. It's a, It's got a, a fun hammy head, a leprechaun hammy head on the front with an awesome green and white template uh, throughout the rest of the sweater. But uh, some big games coming up at home here in March as well after we had a lot of home cooking back in February. Rockford on the road a little bit more here in March as we start to inch closer and closer to playoff hockey. But Without further ado, let's get to our interview with uh, Josh Healy, one of the more veteran uh, players on this team, uh, the most veteran defenseman on this Ice Hogs team. He was a joy to talk to, a great interview. And interesting with him, he runs his own company, uh, the Sports Hawks. We'll talk about it plenty in the interview coming up. Uh, the Sports Hawks, a platform for players to learn more about agents, coaches, and then vice versa. It's an incredible uh, recruiting tool as well, but a space where there's more transparency and more learning can take place as uh, players try to figure out where they want to go, maybe in free agency or what kind of uh, coaches they want to play for, and they can read reviews on the coaches they might be playing for uh, so that they can know what to expect. But it's an awesome uh, new development in, uh, in the hockey community that I think can bring a lot of good, not just to the hockey world, but to the sports world in general. We, general, we talk about some of those uh, applications with heels coming up in the interview. But a great chat with Josh Healy, one of the veteran defensemen for the Ice Hogs. That is what we have here for you on episode 11 of Hawk Talk. 
It's episode number 11 of Hawk Talk, and our guest here today is defenseman Josh Healy. Josh, you've been around the Central Division for a couple of seasons, but we're glad to have you here in Rockford. Uh, how's the season been going for you so far? Uh, it's been going well. Um, it's really good to be here, to be honest. I played, like you mentioned, in, in a few cities around the division here, and Rockford uh, has been a pleasant surprise. You know, the fans are awesome, and we've got a great team, so it's been it's been good. How's the body treating you here? I know several seasons in, like, how, how, is your, how are you holding up? I know we're kind of getting down to the dog days right now. Yeah, I mean, just looking kind of the way I play, like it's pretty physical style. So definitely, definitely kind of beat up just from the years of playing. But we had a great staff here that that takes care of us. Um, as you mentioned, long season, or kind of in the dog days here. Lots of games coming up. It's gonna be it's gonna be good. But I think the boys are, are feeling feeling good, and uh, you know, honors has done a good job of giving us days off to kind of be prepared for this stretch before playoffs. You're one of the more physically fit players on the team. If there was an Ice Hogs calendar, I think you'd probably be January or February, but uh, but you only played 12 games last year because of the shoulder injury. I mean, now you've been in the lineup consistently with Rockford. How has how have you handled that change, you think? Yeah, as you mentioned, like shoulder injury was kind of unfortunate last year. I only played 12 games, I think it was, not including you know, the preseason games, but it was just kind of one of those years where you just focus on yourself, kind of like a character building year, get back to where you want to be. And, and as you mentioned this year, you've been playing kind of a, a steady role um, every night in the lineup, depending on you know if guys are up and down. But it's been good for me, just kind of getting back to my game. Um, a lot of structure here. I think I fit fit well into it and just trying to keep it simple and you know do what I can out there to help the boys win. Last year, you were on a struggling team in San Diego. Now you're on a team in Rockford that's competing night in and night out for playoff positioning and it's also a very young team so how how has that difference been from from last season to this year kind of a totally different scene here in Rockford yeah definitely I think um, as you mentioned we do have a pretty young team here I think we're the youngest or we were the youngest at one point across the whole AHL so being a an older guy, even though I don't feel necessarily like Come an older on. guy. I mean, I, I'm an older guy. I've been around, but I don't feel like, you know, I'm, I'm 35 or anything like that. Um, it's been good to kind of play that role or just lead by example, help the young guys out. we got a really good group of guys who are not only good players, but really good people off the ice. So it's been a pleasure to, to work with them in that regard. And, yeah, as you mentioned, like, it's it's going to be uh, a fight here in, in the end um, to see where we end up with playoffs. I know Milwaukee's got a lot of games under their belt that they've won the last, I think, what, 18 or 19 game win streak. So they'll be, they'll be tough to catch, but it'll definitely be fun to uh, to play them and and Grand Rapids as well, who's who's kind of on a heater right now. Gusty turned 30 the other day. So a, have you given him any grief for that, or and, and b, is that a little scary him being a college <laughs> classmate of yours? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I haven't given him too much grief. Uh, it's good to see he's still still playing. You know, it's tough to stick around as long as uh, as long as we have. Uh, for those who don't know, we went to school at Ohio State together for four years and kind of you know played against each other over the the next seven or eight. But um, no, it's awesome to see he's he's doing well and. Yeah, we're getting up there in age, so thanks for thanks for dating us. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you um, like you said, this is a, a younger team. How impressed have you been with some of these young defensemen, Del Mastro, Allen, Kaiser coming down, guys like that? Yeah, it's uh, it's been really impressive. Um, Kaiser, I'll kind of leave out of it for a sec because he came down later, but right out of the gate, Delhi and Al, like a lot of guys who come out of junior, you know, they have that confidence, but this is a different league, and they've done a very good job at just playing like a professional professional game, very consistent, very mature for their age. And I've been impressed because, I mean, over the seven years I've played pro, it's never been that easy for pretty much any any guys stepping in. So I, I really you know give him credit for that. And then Kai is coming down too. I know he started up with the Hawks. He's been awesome, and I think he's really starting to find his stride now. Um, not that he hadn't before, but he's really starting to come into his own here as a, as a pro. And he'll be – all three of them will be good for us down the stretch, but I think Kai could really uh, – really impressed us here even more so than he has. Well, Andrew Parrott's a, another physical guy. He doesn't play the exact same style as you, but I'm curious, you know, as one of the, you know, more senior defensemen right on this team, like how often are you taking guys under your wing, I, I guess, or maybe teaching things, especially about um, being physical and laying those open ice hits that uh, that is one of your specialties, but also, you know, in the fighting and things like that, teaching guys how to grapple and, and defend themselves. Yeah, so uh, I'll, I'll get to Perry in a sec, but you mentioned about the grappling and, and hanging on um, to guys. For me, when I was in juniors, I fought a 20-year-old when I was 17 and, and kind of got beat up pretty bad. I just didn't know what I was doing, and uh, I went to pro, and I knew I'd have to fight. So a guy uh, by the name of Luke Gazdick, kind of a legendary fighter in the NHL for, for a long time, um, taught me how to more, more so defend myself 
And that's something I wish I had learned earlier in my career. So whenever I'm out with junior teams or especially here with the guys who are stepping into the pro level, like they might not be fighters, but at some point, you know, you might have to fight. Um, so just having the ability to defend, you know, yourself, that's kind of what I want to teach them. But going to Perry for, for a sec here, he's a guy who plays a similar style. He sometimes asks me how I time the hits and this and that. And he's he's a guy I'm been, I've been really impressed with. Um, you know, I, I've been in his shoes a couple years ago in Milwaukee, that 70 in and out of the lineup, just kind of grinding a lot of a lot of scratch skates. So I think he's done a great job at holding himself, you know, at the highest level as a professional. And it's good to see that he's you know, he's, he's getting rewarded when he is playing because um, it's not always easy. Well, Perry's asking how you time up the hits. I mean, we want to know, too. Like, fourth year playing in the Central Division, do you guys know you're coming by now? I would say, yeah. I, I've definitely built a reputation up um, in this division especially, but I think, you know, across the league, which is good. Play with enough guys, you know, you know, hey, keep your head up or this and that. And it just it's just my game. That's why I'm here. Um, I know the element I bring. And yeah, for me, like I'm always kind of looking for it, and sometimes guys get a little lazy with their shoulder checks and whatnot. And if the timing's right, then I'm I'm gonna try and make them pay, and you know, get the boys uh, a little bit of momentum. Can you take us inside the science of a big open ice hit a little bit? Because uh, we see a lot of guys try it, and we've you know, obviously there's there's running a guy on the wall. That's different than what we see you do a lot of times when you're separating somebody from the puck at open ice. And yes, it does give the bench a charge and the building if we're <laughs> playing at the BMO. Yeah, it's, I mean, I'll say for me, it's kind of like just second nature. Um, like some guys have that scoring touch, they know where to be. For me, it's just kind of like knowing where the puck's going to be. So, for example, if it's like a, a rebound and it's coming off the sidewall and that winger's curling into it, like I, I know where he's going to be. And for some people, they see it late or they, they don't see it at all. For me, it's like if I go towards this puck at, you know, this angle, odds are if they don't shoulder check, they're going to look up and then try and get out of the way, which I have that lined up. So I think it's... It's just kind of like an art form in a sense. I've had a lot of guys over the years ask me that. Like I could never, never hit like that. I could never time like that. But I say, you know, I could never, you know, make moves or score the same way other guys do. So it's kind of like my strength that I, I play to. And like I said, it's a big reason why I'm still in this league and uh, on the Rockford Ice Hawks. At what distance do you know that you have a guy on the train tracks? Uh, that's that's an interesting one. There's no real set distance. Um, there was a hit a couple years ago against Tepley, actually. Uh, a pass came from below the goal line to almost just across the red line, and I saw it happening then. Or it could be as quick as, you know, a quick turnover and the guy spins and I'm already coming up the ice. So there's really no uh, no rhyme or reason as to, you know, why I see a hit developing or not. It just kind of happens. Oh, I wanted to ask about that, too, because obviously you play with Chicago and Milwaukee. Like, you remember some of your bigger hits against the Hogs? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um yeah, Taps was one. I felt felt bad, you know. He, he kind of got a suicide pass from his defenseman there, Kalanuk. But, uh, yeah, it, it's always fun playing against the Ice Hogs. You guys have always had competitive teams, and yeah. it's awesome to be on this side of it now. And, you know, it's still Iowa and Grand Rapids. They're all still gritty teams, and that's kind of more my style. And, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm happy to be back because – you know, I enjoy it. Well, I'm sure you've been booed at other arenas for some of those big hits and things like that and, and people getting mad at you. I guess what would you say to, to you know, the side of the game that, that uh, is arguing for, you know, less contact, so to speak, when there still is, like ob like you're saying, a need for that and a place for that? Yeah, it's, it's interesting you bring that up. And, I mean, it's kind of controversial no matter who you talk to. I think a large onus is on the player with the puck. That's what I see. Like, if you skate with your head down up the ice, like, odds are you're probably going to, get hit and then your head's going to be you know a point of contact because you have your head down so I think there obviously is a line between the head being the the principal point of contact but I just think there should be a large onus on the player with the puck because you know you got to be careful too right because guys like myself and whoever else especially in the older days would be looking to take take your head off um, for lack of a better term but um, yeah I don't know I, I think obviously I got to be careful as well um, guys got to you know not look to, to hurt players but i do think that the owner should be more so on the, the player with the puck how nice is it not to have to uh go up against brandon baddock i know you guys had some would have come across each other in the the central a little bit there for one year right yeah there, him for sure he was always a guy you know in the back of my mind i'm like hey, if i make a hit here i might have to fight him uh dylan mackerath was another one cody mcleod some you know bigger heavier guys and i'm not a fighter per se as as i'm sure you know you're you're aware but I got to answer the bell sometimes, which kind of goes back to the story about learning to defend yourself and, uh, yeah, like just being able to 
You're good, Brady. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you remember? Uh, do, do you remember the biggest uh, reverse hit you've ever uh, you've ever taken? Sometime when you, you thought you had a guy lined up and he he gave it to you pretty good. Um, I don't know if there's any a re- real reverse one. I've been hit a couple times. Um, once in college, I remember. His, I think his name is Seth Ambrose in Minnesota. I would always look to to light him up, and he got me once pretty good. Um, but to be honest, there hasn't been very many times I've really you know, got my bell rung. A couple of verse hits here and there, you know, you fall over, but not anywhere. I'm like, oh no, like that was, <laughs> you know, that was, a, that was a bad yeah. one. Well, your, your sister Jessica plays for Boston in the PWHL. Does she play the same kind of style as you? Uh, a little <laughs> bit. Um, she definitely has kind of a gritty side to her game. Um, she was the most penalized player uh, I saw over in Sweden a couple years back. So they, you guys have that streak that runs in your family. It seems yeah, like. <laughs> no, definitely. Definitely. Um, I know my, my grandpa, he played, uh, only I think only one game when there was the original six teams right. for for Detroit, but played a lot of hockey, um, you know, in the leagues below. And he was kind of the same way, like really hard nose, heavy hitting, um, would fight a bit. So I think we got that from from him. But yeah, she's she's a good player. She's doing well. Um, kind of done the the tour a bit, playing in Yangzhou, Ping, Sweden for three years, and then Buffalo with the um, the other league, and then now it's the PWHL. So right. it's uh, yeah, it's been good to see, and and she and she enjoys it. What have you heard from her about that about that league, how players are treated, and, and how they've been received by their communities as well? I mean, from what I've seen and what everyone has seen kind of just in the media, like they get lots of support, lots of attention. Um, my sister says they have great fans, so that's, that's really good to see because yeah. a lot of times in the past, you know, they've struggled to get a lot of fans to games. And I think with this new league, they're doing a great job at promoting it, and there is like, you know, thousands and thousands of fans that are going to the games, so that's what that's what you want. And um yeah, she says it's it's kind of first class, so yeah. she she really enjoys it. Now, both um, you and her went the college route. She was playing at Minnesota Duluth, is that right? Yeah. So was that something that your family had kind of planned out ahead of time, or was that just the right choice for both of you guys? I think for, for women's hockey, um, regardless of my route, that's kind of like the route you would go. Yeah. Um, there's no real junior A leagues um, for girls. For me personally, I just – I was pretty small when I was 14, so – didn't get drafted to the Western Hockey League and didn't really get any attention from Western Hockey League teams until I was 17. That's kind of when I hit my growth spurt and started to play well uh, and in the Sher- with the Sherwood Park Crusaders of the AJHL, which is now the BCHL. Um, but yeah, no, for me, the, the maybe a blessing in disguise, the path was kind of chosen for me where I wasn't going to play in the Western League just because I just you know wasn't ready physically. And then when teams started calling, um, you know, call, colleges started started calling, I should say, um, you know, I knew for sure that was going to be my path. And, you know, as we all know, Michigan's beaten Ohio State three straight years. What do you have to say for your university in football, that is? Uh, we're, we're still number one. Um, <laughs> you know, if you look at the history, it's it's all Ohio State. And, you know, going back, I still remember me and Gusty when they won the national championship in 2015. It was a pretty pretty surreal moment um, for the whole school, but obviously really awesome for for the football team. So just being a part of that when they won is, you know, once in a lifetime kind of thing. And I remember I think that year I was at a game um, against Michigan. We went double OT in the shoe, and there's still a questionable call with whether or not JT got the the first the first down or not. But um, no, it's awesome. Really really good memories. And I mean Ohio State will be back at some point here, but right now it's. Uh, it's a team up north, unfortunately. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, there's a picture on Instagram of you and Joe Burrow hanging out together. Is that correct? Or yeah, that's uh, you guys close. That's correct. Uh, <laughs> I should I say we're close loosely now. Um, at school, we were we we're pretty close. So I had really, a, I was asking that totally sarcastic. Yeah, you guys were buddies, huh? Yeah, no. So uh, I had a good friend. Uh, his name is Stephen Coiler. He was. He was a quarterback, and he got hurt, like tore you know, his ACL, I think it was, so he wasn't really going to play. But I hung out with him quite a bit. And the way it works with a lot of football teams is they hang out in positions, so a little bit different than hockey. So all the quarterbacks would hang out together. So at the time, it was JT Barrett. He was like face of the Big Ten, setting, setting records, um, kind of the man on campus. And Joe was that kind of the second, third, fourth string quarterback that kept bringing in guys in front of him. Um, so we would all like hang out. But, again, I never knew – I knew he was good because he was at Ohio State, right? I know everyone who's there for football is good, but I just saw him as like a regular guy. Like we just hang out. Um, when I went back in the summer, you know, we'd kick it a few times, and then 
I I graduated and signed with the Flames and saw he had transferred to LSU and I mean he had an unbelievable year and then another unbelievable year, you know Heisman first overall and I'm like man this is this is awesome for him so <laughs> I uh, I still keep in contact with uh, a couple of the guys I haven't talked to to Joe in a little bit but I mean he's he's superstar now he's busy yeah. so wish him nothing but the best and I'm sure we'll connect again at, at some point. Well coming from Edmonton like how much exposure had you had to American college and that world and then uh, and also kind of like what were some of the things that surprised you about maybe the way that like athletes are treated on campus at, at a place like Ohio State? Yeah, I mean, the Canadian, like the CIS route is just not not comparable to, you know, NCAA, uh, Div 1 or Div 3 schools. I think for me, just being at the University of Alberta, like being around that atmosphere, there wasn't many fans, there wasn't that much school spirit. It's just kind of like people live at home and then, you know, commute to Commuter school. Commuter campuses, yeah. right. So that's typically how it was. Um, that's kind of what I expected what I expected, you know, and then when I got to Ohio State, it was just like everyone is all about the school. The whole city surrounds you. Um, mind you, it's a big school, you know, 60,000 undergrad, huge football program. So maybe not the same for for every every uh, college. But I mean, it was awesome. Like the com camaraderie you have is just crazy amongst teams, fans, um, everyone in the city. So it was it was really exciting. And I know you can talk to Gussie about this, too, but it's probably like the best, you know, best four years or top four years of, uh, of the life so far. Yeah. And how about the way that like, I know we talk about football, but like the way that football players are treated, because I know them and at some schools like here in America, basketball as well, like they're kind of operating on a different scale than normal human beings or normal yeah. students. Yeah, definitely. Um, when you think about it, I mean, it's, it's a business at the end of the day and Ohio state, if you take, you know, the football program, for example, like they're multi-billion dollar, company and they make a lot of money for the school and the NCAA so the players are definitely taken care of in the sense like we're going to make sure they're performing their best to you know keep those numbers up and I think it can be hard for guys at times um, obviously now they have some of the NIL stuff coming out so they're going to get um, you know compensated fairly but uh, yeah it's uh, it's a different level they're, they're show time for sure and I'd say it's comparable to the NHL uh, level or the you know NBA level, but they're getting that and the, the college level. Is there anything that you can tell us about, uh, without getting anybody in trouble? Like uh, seeing football players, I know like for example at UW, like um, or at Wisconsin, football players like will get mopeds and they'll ride around campus. And anything you, you see any <laughs> football players pulling up in, in Cadillacs or, or Stingrays or, or anything like that? Um, there's definitely a couple guys that you would know um, pretty big name guys that got some extra benefits we'll call it uh, sure. when they weren't allowed at the time I won't throw anyone under the bus but I know, I, I know for a fact that it happened and I mean I, I it's I'm not a secret yeah right? it's not a secret um, just a matter of proving it but yeah it's uh, it is what it is you know these yeah. guys are making a lot of money for the school and it's uh it's rightfully earned and now with that like the nil stuff i think it's uh it's in a it's in a good place for everyone to play as college so you signed with calgary coming out of school were you glad that you were undrafted that way you could kind of look around a little bit or like what was the interest like that's uh that's a tough question to answer i think you have arguments for both sides mm -hmm. you know if you're drafted obviously you get that attention you get development camps people are kind of grooming you you get the extra benefits um on the development side of things in addition to your actual junior or college team or you're a free agent, you have a good senior year, junior year, and then you got 32 teams to choose from. So, I mean, for me, I was, it worked out, you know, fortunately for me, like Calgary was interested and close to home and had a good, good two years, good last two years of school. Cause sometimes guys get offered, then they go back and they don't have a great year and they have nothing. So, um, yeah, I think it worked out the way, the way it should have, but I'm happy that I was, I was undrafted. And so you signed with Calgary and then there was a gap year in between, you know, your, your entry level NHL contract. And then the next one you signed with, with Nashville, yeah. a lot of guys don't have that gap and then get that next NHL deal. So what kind of happened there to get that next contract? Yeah, it's uh, like, everyone's got their path. Um, everyone's kind of just battling, you know, to, to make it to the NHL. So for me, signed two year deal, um, entry level with Calgary, and then they didn't qualify me at the end of that year. Um, I had an okay two seasons. I wouldn't say I was unbelievable. I was, I was just kind of finding my way in the pro game, and ended up signing with Milwaukee, so American League team in this division, and worked my way up. That was a COVID year, so we only played 55 games. I think I played, you know, 33 of that. It was tough. I mentioned going back to Perry, kind of being in that position where you're grinding, fighting to get in. So, um, you know, had a, had a good year there, character wise, character building wise, and then ended up signing a contract with them for the following season. The COVID year, as we know, is kind of kind of mixed mixed and match. So I actually played for the Chicago Wolves, and we split um, a farm team with the Carolina Hurricanes, Nashville Predators. So I was there for 
for 30 games. But towards the trade deadline, um, I was playing pretty well, just really doing, you know, doing what I do best. And uh, they signed me to an NHL deal, the National Predators did, and then I rolled over into an AHL deal for the next year. So it's uh, it's worked out for me. Like I said, you know, it's it's tough. It's a tough league. You got to kind of find your find your way and. For me, it's been an interesting path, but I'm really happy that I'm ended up here right now playing for the Rockford Ice Hawks. Well, talk about a guy with an interesting path. It, you have maybe one of the most interesting storylines on this team. I'm talking, of course, about uh, the company that you started, the Sports Ox. Can you just kind of run us through that platform, what it does, how you got the idea, and, and how it's gotten to the point where it is now? Yeah, for sure. So very high level. It's uh, Should I put my hat on for this point? Yeah, I, you can pop, pop the hat on. There we go very high level it's it's like the linkedin crossed with ray my professor but for but for hockey so players essentially can go on find their profile it's a, it's a big database and get verified and then anonymously rate and review their past and current coaches and agents for for all users to see you know players parents um, just general fans on the flip side um, agents and coaches can use it as a recruiting tool to keep track of players of interest to them or the draft picks or you know, whoever might be across, again, all leagues and levels. And it's just really that one-stop shop for anything hockey, especially when it comes to recruitment. So this, the idea came when I was playing junior. As I mentioned, I was in Sherwood Park and not getting a, a crazy amount of attention. And I made Team Canada West, which put me on the map for a lot of schools. And I had numerous schools and agencies talking to me, talking to my parents, coming to watch me play, saying, hey, we want to sign you. We want you to commit to our school. And this was all, like, awesome, right? Like, it's everything you dream of. But... My parents and I realized pretty quick there wasn't a resource, a credible resource, I should say, to go to and find information on on these salesmen at the end of the day, right? Because they all want they all want your business and they're promising you the world. So for me, I end up signing with uh, an agency and ended up, ended up committing to Ohio State. I got lucky at Ohio State, you know, great coach, great four years. I had other friends uh, and teammates who went to other places that didn't have quite that same experience that were either lied to or kind of promised more than they got. Um, so I, I, it really worked out for me on the, on the school side of things. I had to release one of my agents, um, find a new one. Again, that process was pretty tough. Release him again, and now I'm on my third one. But when I was in school, I'm like, well, how do I potentially create a business if I don't play hockey after, you know, to help players and parents kind of go through what I went through and give them that resource? So it's it's a bit of a niche market, but it's worked out for me. I'm, I'm a bit of an entrepreneur. I like the business side of things and felt, you know, if I can kind of get this started while I'm playing and use my name, image and likeness and my connections to help build it up uh, before we take it full scale. And, you know, I'm going to do that. So it's, uh, it's been good. We're, we're growing, um, you know, every day. And I think it's a resource that's going to be really helpful in the years to come. And I've heard that from a lot of current and former players and guys I didn't even, didn't even know did that have reached out. Well, and I think of like, you know, my brother back in Indiana is, is trying to be recruited for football and things like that. And there's so much unknown, I think, for parents and, and for young athletes as well, like who to look for, who to try and reach out to and contact and, and who to trust. And, and yeah. you're saying your platform is kind of at least providing a guide or a navigational chart for, for people to, to walk through this process with some more transparency and more information. Is that right? Yeah. So essentially transparency and accountability are like the two, the two main ones, um, the two, two main pillars here. So as you mentioned, there's a lot of uncertainty and a lot of, you know, I guess like for lack of a better, better word, like no trust between somebody who say, Hey, you know, come here. Hey, come here. So what, what happens is we cross-reference the years played with all the coaches on staff during those seasons. So if you're a parent or a player, just a general fan, and you're looking at a review, you know, one, that it's been screened by our platform, I, I should mention that, and two, it's from an actual player who's been coached by that coach. So I can go leave a review um, you know, on, on a coach in the NHL that I haven't had, just like fans can't leave reviews. It's all pretty credible that way. So as you mentioned, if you're looking at different schools or approached by a coach, you can go and say, okay, these are what the players are saying. This guy fits my style. He doesn't. And start the conversation that way, which is another another key piece of, yeah. of information to help you make that informed decision. Well, that could be huge for young players too. Like, is this guy going to you know play a certain way? Or, or what have similar players who have gone through the system who might have a similar skill set or background to me, what have they said? And they can, they can pick up this information as well. And so you've been doing this, all of this, while you're a pro hockey player, right? So this is like a full-time thing and then hockey's a full-time thing. Can you explain maybe like that, that breakdown? Yeah, for, for sure. So I started it uh, my second year when I was playing in Stockton and we're in close to Silicon Valley. So I did a couple of trips down there and 
Now with some. So you're a tech guy now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm pretending to be. You know, fake it till you make it. Uh, but I have learned a lot because it's something that you know I didn't learn in school. I was a, a finance major. Um, but no, so just yeah, had to throw that in there. Had, nice. had to throw it in there. You know, I'm not a, not a computer science guy. But no, so I just met with these companies and had a good fit with one of them. Developers were overseas uh, or overseas, sorry, um, in Ukraine. Um, they've now since, you know, kind of kind of dispersed. So that was that was pretty tough. It kind of hit home for me. When, wow. with, with the war and everything going on just because like I was dealing with you know people who are with Ukrainians with Ukrainians and they're telling me like yeah I gotta leave on short notice and this and that and now they're working remotely from different areas um, you know of countries you know surrounding countries so that was kind of kind of crazy for me um, which I think almost you know in a sense was good it made me appreciate you know where we are now and it's kind of a, kind of a tangent but um, basically was working with them uh, in the early mornings before practice and then I would go to practice and work on stuff in, in the afternoon. And then as things progressed, you know, it kind of continued that way. So we have practice in the morning. And if I don't have meetings in the morning um, with overseas individuals for developer or development reasons or just, you know, general business reasons, then I'll work in the afternoon and uh, kind of plan plan the next steps. But it's been it's been a good experience and it's been a lot of fun, I think. A lot of guys kind of just do nothing um, with their spare time, and we do go have to movies. Lot, go to <laughs> movies. Uh, we do have a lot of spare time, and yeah. for me, I've I've never really been wanting to sit around and play video games. I do enjoy enjoy them every now and again, but I think you know, for me to kind of occupy my time with this and build towards something after hockey that I can you know maybe help with help give back essentially you know to the players going through something I went through. I think it's it's going to be pretty rewarding for me. So, is there a point down the road where you know the players union gets involved and things like that? We'll see. Okay. I th- okay. I, th- I think. Uh, stay tuned. Yeah. Stay tuned. I think there's a lot of avenues we could we can go, especially when we're gonna have you know thousands and thousands of players on there across all leagues and levels, and have kind of that that trust and family camaraderie. Um, yeah. We'll see what happens. I think there's a lot of things that could be changed in in hockey, uh, the pro level all the way down to the to the squirt level. I know we saw here. I'm gonna go back to the AJHL and BCHL teams are leaving. There's new leagues. There's super leagues. There's different uh different midget levels you know there's academies now so i think there's a lot of movement and a lot of people are kind of going out on their own and for me to be kind of a pioneer to platform uh or create the platform for players and parents to you know to utilize when they're dealing with all these coaches and different academies and and junior teams it's going to be uh it's gonna be pretty helpful for everyone it's up and working right now um have you heard success stories from it where like you know parents or or or, or players have come through and said like like, wow, I, I, I was maybe thinking this and then I read reviews and I went a different way or, or maybe these reviews confirmed what I was hoping to figure out. Yeah, definitely. So I've had I've had quite a few people reach out um, via social media, just basically like it's a great platform. Like I would have used this or I needed this or I'm using it now. So I've got had a lot of those testimonials. But the one that kind of hit home for me was actually last year in San Diego at camp. This guy came up to me. And I didn't know him at all. Never, never played against him before. And he's like, "Hey, you're you're Josh Healy," and I'm like, "Yeah, how's it going, man? Just you know, meet him, kind of like you do when you first get to uh, to camp." And he's like, "Oh, well, I uh, I like your app." I'm like, "Oh, sweet. Like, what do you like about it?" He's like, "Well, I found my agent on it, and you know, it's been awesome for me." I'm like, "Oh, well, like, you know, how how's he been for you?" He, well, he's got me to this AHL camp, and something never happened before. So I got to thank you for helping me find the right guy for me and no way. giving me this opportunity. So it was something like it's like little things like that where I know over the years, it's going to be tenfold, um, whether I hear about it or not. So having this guy come face to face with me, who's got an opportunity to play in, in the American Hockey League, um, or at least try out for an American Hockey League team, which he never had before because he found an agent through the sports Sox is, uh, it's, it's awesome. awesome. It's, it's exciting and it's good to hear and kind of keeps me going. That, that's the front page of the website right there. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's the, that's, that's your bread and butter, but I know it's just a hockey app right now. Do you see it scaling to other sports potentially? Yeah, definitely. I think, um, the other sports is where the numbers are at, to be totally honest. Um, hockey's big market, but it's not really that big compared to football, basketball, baseball, soccer, mm-hmm. especially when you bring the fans into it. Um, yeah, definitely looking to scale. It's maybe a project more for this summer, working on the new business plan right now and how that's all going to work and you know all the financing that's going to need that's going to be needed to go into that. But um, yeah, I'm excited for that next stage too, because I think it could be really good for sports overall, as we talked about with the accountability yeah. and transparency. And especially now, like you look at the NCAA level with the transfer portal and what goes on and a lot of players jumping from one team to another, maybe because they, 
they were sold a bill of goods and yeah. that those didn't come through. And so now they want a new program. Like how even more valuable could that transparency be? Like, I don't know how much you've thought that through. I'm, I'm guessing a lot because you come from that, the yeah. NCAA world, but I, I would imagine that there's a, a whole nother, you know, sphere that you could tap into just thinking about the portal and NIL and things like that. Yeah, definitely. So I think like kind of what you touched on, it's the bit of the wild West right now in the yeah. NCAA and it's no different than pro, right? This is how it is. So if you're your player looking to move teams or want to get a better feel for you know the coaching staff on another team or another league or another country you know for that matter it's uh, it's something that can help you out and we also have um, the ability for coaches to rate and review players so it's all anonymous as well and that helps the scouting si- side of things right it does help the scouting side of things I think a lot of like if you look at Mark Bernard at RG, I mean, he's trying to find the background report on a lot of guys and if you can go to the sports socks now where it's like okay Here's reviews from six coaches who have had him. Here's the kind of you know work he puts in. Here's his attitude. Here's his character. You now know with more certainty what kind of player you're bringing into your locker room, and what kind of teammate he's going to be, which ultimately will help you you know win games. So right. I think um, when everyone hears the word reviews, oh I don't want to be reviewed, this and that. Coaches say that, agents say that. It's it's just human nature. But there's going to be a real real upside to the behavior that's encouraged right if you're a good agent you do good things for your guy for your guys you're gonna get good reviews which in turn will get you more clients and then more money at the end of the day same with coaches like you could be in the ushl and you're a great coach but no one hears about you yet you go on the sports talks platform and there's guys i can think of right now i think his name is anthony noreen uh i think he's in tri-city never met the guy don't know him but like i would almost run through a wall for him seeing what players have said <laughs> so a guy like that's like okay well like he's putting in his resume to get hired as the next ice hogs coach you know and when honors moves up or whatever it might be and Bernie's got this other guy. It's like, well, I don't know anything about this guy, but I got 15 reviews saying this is like the best coach players ever had. It's kind of like who's going to get, you know, the the opportunity. It's right. It's going to be the coach. So I think that same happens with players. If you're a good player, good person, it's not really um, like something you're graded on with regards to how your play is. It's more mm-hmm. so like your character on and off the ice because everyone can go watch tape and see how you are, but it's yeah. more like what you can't see. And I really think it's going to help players um, – coaches and agents in the long run. Well, on both sides of things, it's it's basically taking like the word of mouth that you used to have to pound the pavement for and almost, I mean, it, it's making it quantitative now because there's ratings too, right? Is it out of yep. 10? Yeah. Okay. And that's just based on like the positiveness or negativeness of, of the review. Is that how it goes on different guys? Yeah. So with, with coaches and agents, there's a questionnaire, okay. uh, 10 question questionnaire, three different categories, basically just stating, you know, like if they get back to you on time, if they're prepared, how professional they are, there's, there's a list, a little bit different for coaches or agents. Uh, with regards to players, it's just a one out of five kind of overall experience, and then they can leave a comment. So what we do is we basically double. So if it's five out of five, then it'd be you know a 10, 10 out of ten score. We have that for teams as well, so people can leave or players, sorry, can leave an organizational review. So if I leave, you know, this year I can leave a review on the Rockford Ice Hogs and see how it's treated, facilities, staff members, you know, broadcasters, broadcasters. Yeah, yeah we can uh, <laughs> we can mix it all in. So again, you get you get a good feel of what you're walking into, not just from a coaching standpoint, but also a culture standpoint. Well, and, and this is hyper relevant now, but also like when you were with the Calgary Flames back in 2019, we had the the Bill Peter situation. We don't have to go into all of that now, but but that's an instance where the sports hogs again can provide that information. Was that kind of in the back of your mind too, as you've gone about in this process, instances like that, especially with an organization that you were a part of? Yeah, it's it's funny you say that. Um, it actually wasn't for me. Like I, I came at it from the angle of, I wasn't getting recruited. I should have been getting recruited. How do I get recruited and help players, you know, that were in my position? That's the angle I've taken. Um, in parallel to that, I could have been someone who was, you know, verbally, sexually, um, abused at some point when I was playing at lower levels. And and my goal would have been like, okay, I'm going to create this platform to prevent kids or players from going through this because I went through it. So I think it definitely hits both sides of, of the spectrum. It's going to make hockey safer, hold coaches, agents, players accountable and facilita- facilitate that transparency, but also going to help them get recruited. So when you bring up the Bill Peters thing, um, there's been stuff with Mike Babcock. Like there's lots of things that have gone on in the NHL. But you also look at the junior levels and even below that, it's, it's not very hard to find a headline, um, which is unfortunate, especially in hockey, you know, with, with something happening with coaches and, and abuse. So if we can be a platform to help kind of deter 
or you know deter um, mm. coaches from signing up if they know they're going to be raided, and kind of be a bit of a whistleblowing um, platform as well to keep players safe who want to maybe not go to the team or want to keep their name out of it. Then we can uh, we can be the resource for them too. Yeah, that, that's awesome stuff, and uh, it, it's exciting to hear about that too. It's on just the App Store and, and anywhere you can f- download apps. Yeah, right now we're just iOS. Uh, we will be on the Google Store okay. pretty soon here, um, and then we have a website coming out in the next couple months. But right now we're just live on iOS. Okay, and then um, just kind of transitioning away from from sports talk. So that's great. And, and are you out of hats, by the way, or are there any more of these floating around? <laughs> there's a couple more hats. I don't have too many, but there's a couple. <laughs> we're getting bombarded now. By uh, I think that was that was our general manager Mark Bernard I think who's, who's throwing things at us. <laughs> um, but your mom and dad were here in town the other day, right? Were they down yeah. from from Edmonton, or is that where yeah. they still are? Yeah, still in Edmonton. Um, they usually make the the Winnipeg trip um, a couple times a year. It's pretty easy for them to get there, so they they see me play a decent amount. Um, unfortunately, last year I was hurt, so I was never in Calgary, which would have been easy for them. But yeah, they came down to Rockford. Um, my sister was playing in Minnesota the the Sunday, so they caught the Friday Saturday games here. Uh, two big wins for us, and then uh, Sunday they drove up and saw my Tim sister. Tim and Pam, they're welcome back anytime, right? Yeah, they're good. <laughs> good luck, good luck, time. So they're coming back for Parents Weekend and everything. So it's uh, it's good, but no, they've they've been huge support to me and my sister, and you know, I wouldn't be where I'm where I'm at today in hockey or in life or business without them. So I really appreciate everything they've done for for me and. You know they they like coming to the games and supporting yeah. supporting me still so it's fun. Yeah, well, you're clearly a, a high achiever, obviously. You know, with a finance degree, but then putting that to good work and and being an entrepreneur and and being a high level hockey player as well. Does that come from those two? I think a little bit, yeah. Um, my mom is pretty smart. She's pretty dialed in. Um, that's kind of how it's been on, on on her side of the family too, and my grandparents. But my dad's side, it's more the athletic hockey kind of focus. That's always kind of been been them. So I think it got kind of the best best of both worlds with some Made uh, a superhuman, superhuman. <laughs> <laughs> We're working on it, but uh, no, it's been good. I got you know really good genetic genetics and um, some hockey ability. I probably didn't get the hands from from my dad or my grandpa. That's one thing I'm missing. But to kind of split down the middle and get some brains and uh, also be athletic is uh, is a good. The good thing I'm happy about. No, it was great chopping up, chopping it up with them uh, after the game. They, they they mentioned that I had mistakenly said you were from Calgary one of the nights, and so they they rode me a little bit for that, oh, but really? deservedly so. <laughs> I mean, but. yeah, I uh, yeah, my, I got some family down in Calgary. I like Calgary as a city, honestly. It's a good spot, but I think if you've been Edmonton your whole life, you, you don't mistake be, it for Calgary. Yeah, yeah it's kind of like ah. I don't want that. <laughs> hey, you can't you can't trust everything I say, right? But uh, before we before we cut you loose here, I wanted to bring this up because you and I had talked about this when we were out in San Diego, and you were telling me about how um, you were, or maybe we were in San Jose, and uh, you were telling me about how you stepped on that stingray last year, stung on the foot. We don't have to like relive that story now, <laughs> uh, although it is a hilarious story. But you yeah. were saying you're a big nature guy, right? Yeah. H- has that like come to fruition in any of the spots you've been in? Or are you like going out on these uh, hikes and stuff, or, uh, or what? So yeah, I was stung by a stingray last year. That was, you know, you always got to respect the ocean, but it made me really respect the ocean because if something that size can do that to me, and there's lots of great whites and and you know other sharks that are in the area, you got to be careful about them too. But no, for me, I've I've always been a nature guy. Um, in the summer, just outside Calgary, you got Canmore, Banff, um, Kananaskis country. So I'm always there hiking, biking, fishing, camping, doing that kind of stuff. I just love being outside, kind of getting away from all the the technology. And I'm trying to think, right? You know, here in Rockford, I got set up with a few guys who I actually go hunting with. So, go out uh, after the the Tuesday games sometimes, or the Wednesday games, and we'll go, you know, hunting for some coyotes and whatnot. And got the thermal scope out, so it's been nice. it's, it's been new to me. Um, I'm not a hunter per se. I just kind of been been learning the ropes because no one in my family has really been a hunter. But it's okay. been it's been cool. So, yeah, San Diego did a lot of fishing, uh, a lot of time on the beach outside that way, and then been here. It's kind of been the opposite, you know, yeah. hunting more than fishing. But, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think. In, in Stockton, there wasn't really too much going on outside, and I tend to do most of the stuff, um, you know, in the summer if I'm going to be out in the backwoods. Yeah. What are you fishing for normally? I mean, out, out west would be a little bit different than here. But uh, were you just going out on boats and stuff or off the pier? Yeah, so I went uh, deep sea fishing a couple times, um, just catching rockfish and whatever else. Actually, kind of funny story, This the guy I went with um, – he he owns or he works in a, a fish market so he's he knows all of the all the captains so he ends up getting us on this boat big boat and we go out to this one spot that hadn't been fished for years for whatever reason it was blocked off so i pull out like a 14 pound uh, rockfish this certain type of rockfish and 
the captain's like, I've been doing trips twice a day, every day for 30 years. I've never seen one that big. Come on. And it was, it was, yeah, it was massive. Um, same with the, the guy I went with. He's like, I've never seen one that big and I've fished, you know, a lot of, a lot of years. Out here. What was so, What was it like fighting that thing? I, it was all right. It wasn't like, you know, fighting a Marlin or anything, but it's still like when you're 400 feet down and you're reeling, like it's, it's a pretty good forearm burn. But, um, yeah, when it got close to the surface, it started to, to fight a bit. So, um, yeah, no, it's always fun getting out there. Um, so that's, I'm catching some rockfish and then, um, trying to think, you know, back home in the summer, it's a lot of trout. If I'm not on the, on the, some fly the fishing, ocean, all fly fishing. Okay. So going to Kananaskis country, um, even so south, Southern, uh, southern alberta we got a lot of a lot of good rivers so a lot of brown trout cutthroat trout brook trout and uh rainbow trout and then if you head out a little bit farther west you'll catch uh, some salmon in the ocean so that's always fun too well if you pull a 14 pound uh was it rockfish rock bass uh, yeah. if you pull one of those yeah. out of the rock river then we might have to shut the nuclear power plant down because <laughs> <laughs> they're going a little overboard over there then but uh heels this has been awesome man thanks for sitting down with us um if you're a hockey player or, or trying to get recruited or what have you check out the sports ox is it just the sports yeah, com? Okay. Uh, an awesome platform. Thanks for running us through that. That That's a, it's a really cool thing that you're doing. I know it's kind of given back to the hockey community in a sense and, uh, and hopefully can help a lot of people uh, down the road. So uh, yeah. thanks for the time. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. It's been awesome. Another thanks to Josh Healy for coming on. A great chat with him speaking about his app. And it was awesome to hear about the process that went into that for him and kind of how uh, he came to want to start developing that company. You can tell that even though he's known for being a physical force on the ice, he's got a great head on his shoulders. He's very well put together, a finance guy from Ohio State uh, and a joy to talk to. So we appreciate his time. But again, the Ice Hogs have a game coming up against the Chicago Wolves here on Saturday and then two big games next week against the Texas Stars. So a lot of big action coming your way. If you're not able to attend the games, which Again, we don't expect you to in uh, Cedar Park, Texas, down near Austin, but uh, we hope that you tune in on the Ice Hogs Broadcast Network, whether that is on Mixler, whether that's on AHL TV, or on uh, 19.2 to 365 as well. Three great viewing slash listening options for you to consume what's been an exciting run for Rockford. The Hogs have won five in a row heading into this Saturday bout against the Chicago Wolves. And Rockford is going to be plenty rested as well. That's important this time of the year. The Hawks should have some key pieces returning to the lineup. Colton Dock, David Gust, Austin Strand, three players who have been cleared for contact and practice and who uh, you should expect to see out there uh, repping the black white and red uh, these next few contests so Rockford starting to maybe find their stride at a crucial time coming down the last few months of the regular season but that wraps up episode number 11 of Hawk Talk appreciate you tuning in and we'll see you next time